Good afternoon, uh, Omadi Saeed. Uh, we are uh, working in uh, this project with uh, a group of uh, researchers from the RSS and the uh, Royal Botanic Garden, as well as the uh, dam, King Talal Dam authorities, to, uh, to achieve some uh, of Fire Highness uh, visions uh, in uh, the Botanic Garden to have a safe traditional uh, building that made from uh, uh, that made from bricks uh, incorporated with uh, fire bricks incorporated with uh, damp sediments. Uh, actually, this is an ongoing project. Uh, this uh, ongoing project is a continuing project. Uh, from the uh, we started to produce these bricks by uh, 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 by the uh, waste uh, uh, sewage sludge ash and sewage sludge uh, uh, the previous project uh, funded by the uh, uh, higher uh, council uh, and then we are uh, trying to produce these bricks in a safe manner we uh, in uh, a safe manner that's me for a human being and uh, for uh, engineering uh, point of view so uh, uh, as we most of us know water is precious in Jordan. Uh, so uh, the problem is acute, around 141 uh, liters per day for, uh, for a person. And this is uh, uh, the short, you know, this is the, the most uh, acute quantity in the world even. So uh, water is important in Jordan, so we need to conserve this water and we uh, need to keep it clean as much as we can do. So we have the biggest dam in Jordan, it is uh, the King Talal Dam, and most of our uh, harvesting, water harvesting goes to this dam, but other streams go to this dam also passing through three main uh, wastewater treatment plants also, and there's uh, uh, in addition of the domestic areas and some industrial areas in in uh, these streams. So uh, around 300,000 uh, 300, metric cube per year of liquid sludge goes uh, uh, to the, to the uh, produced, or let's go, uh, say produced from these different uh, wastewater treatment uh, plants. Most of these quantities goes, uh, find uh, its way to the dam, water dam, and then to the water dam sediments. Uh, of course, as we said, uh, uh, th th this uh, uh, discharge, uh, discharge through, uh, through the Zarqa River to King Talal, to King Talal Dam. Therefore, any pollution in the river will lead to pollution in the dam water and its sediments, as we see in these pictures. This is the sediments in uh, top view, but uh, uh, this is the top view of the sediments. This picture was taken in uh, summer, actually, before uh, any uh, rain uh, this, uh, this year, before any uh, uh, rain season. Uh, as we'll see from the next, uh, the second picture, uh, the cross section of these seven sediments it was uh, uh, harvested or removed by a big, uh, big shovel. And uh, we moved uh, by, the, of course, the cooperation with King Talal Dam Authority. This around uh, more than 20 metric ton. So we had a composite sample from this hole, this big hole, uh, to do some analysis on it and see if there's some pollution there or not. Of course, this is accumulated for t uh, tens of years, this uh, quantity of sediments. So this is the, some uh, major oxide major oxide analysis, silica, alumina, uh, iron, to see if there's some glaceous material or not, because in producing the fire bricks, we need glaceous material, uh, a, good, uh, a good quantity and quality of this uh, glaceous material to uh, have a chemically and physically uh, sustainable uh, brick to be used in uh, building construction. Yeah, of course, this is some physical and chemical uh, property of this, uh, as you will see from TGA. And uh, weight losses, it has a, a low percentage 
of organic matter, actually. <laughs> this is uh, for uh, same sediments, same composite sample from these sediments. For, uh, let's say, the heavy metals, we have here the cadmium, the lead, the chromium, arsenic, and the mercury, the main, let's say, main uh, heavy metals. And the rest, uh, the, the rest of the elements may have, uh, for certain levels it is toxic, for certain levels not. So we are now looking for the cadmium, lead, chrome, arsenic, and mercury, and we compare it to the EBA, TCLB, toxicity characteristic regulatory ceiling levels, and we find uh, that we are above these limits. So uh, we need certain way, safe way to convert this, uh, these levels, these high levels of toxic into a uh, lower limit of these uh, let's say less than the TCLB uh, level. How we can do this? We can do it only, not by removing, only by chemical fixation of these heavy metals to uh, less mobile uh, environment, such as sintering process or uh, let's say uh, sintering process or uh, uh, vertification process, we call it, or we call it in general brick making uh, process. This is also uh, gives some physical uh, properties of the dried sediments. And we, will, we see it, it, it has certain plasticity. The plasticity index is around 16. And that means it's uh, worth it to produce some bricks of, uh, of such material, uh, fire bricks actually. And from the, sieve, the wet sieve analysis also shows that it is uh, uh, more than 80% Less than, uh, less than uh, 60 micrometer, so that means it's, um, uh, it's uh, rich with, rich with uh, clayous material. Also, the, uh, here we can see the uh, microbiological analysis, and it shows that it is uh, safe to be handled and uh, to deal with it, uh, with this, uh, with this sediment, without uh, further precautions. And here also we have some character, uh, uh, some uh, uh, characterization uh, used by we use the XRD and uh, uh, FTIR to characterize these sediments and to find uh, to improve that it is uh, there is a clayous material there. Uh, the objectives of this study: uh, a hazardous sediments will be centered in form of bricks there. Uh, the use of sediments in the production of bricks not only uh, uh, elevated the disposal problem, but also as economic, ecological, and energy saving advantage, as we will see. <coughs> well, what we meant by centering process or chemical fixation, actually these two uh, SEM photos shows the uh, bricks after firing that contains the that contains the, let's say, um, in this example, it's sludge uh, waste, uh, that's produced by, from sewage uh, wastewater treatment plants. So as we'll see at different magnification, uh, these uh, heavy metals were centered and fixed and convert to immobilized uh, form. The bricks will be produced with different mix. Now, now we are in uh, the process. We have different mixing ratios. If some physical properties uh, we didn't achieve or we didn't uh, achieve the limits of these physical properties, we need to add uh, and amend with some natural clay material. <clears throat> for example, for 20%, 50%, and uh, all, all we, all, all maybe we'll use if it is 0% uh, of uh, amendment by natural clay material. Of course, uh, Researchers from different disciplines will focus their investigation on the following. As we uh, saw previous uh, slides, that microbiological tests are being conducted, physical, biological, also a characterization for these sediments have been done, and chemical characterization for sediments and clay also have been done. Mechanical and chemical characteristics of the produced brick. Uh, it will be carried carry, uh, next week. Uh, the data will be uh, gathered, inshallah. 
potential users in construction industry. After that, we will produce this. After we, find, we will set the optimum condition of producing these uh, bricks, we will produce it in mass production. And as we will see, uh, to build a design or a model uh, for, for a traditional house by these bricks. Uh, expected outputs of uh, this project, of course, we will have less waste material who uh, will be disposed or accumulated. The supplier of primary raw material, of course, the clay, silica, or water uh, for bricks making will be used less frequently. Lay down the foundation for the acceptability by the public of using sediments in the construction sector. And uh, also, we have many other expected outputs. Let's go to some technical issues where we are or what we did up to now. Uh, of course, we have here two uh, two machines: a pilot plant machine or extruder at this size, and another one this size. Actually, it is uh, already purchased, and uh, maybe next month uh, we will receive it and we will install it. Uh, this small one, a small uh, bug mill, we use it to produce a laboratory, actually, laboratory size, laboratory size for testing uh, to achieve the optimum condition. Uh, and also we started, actually, this is uh, where designed and produced and machined in RSS. Uh, we have to uh, started with, uh, with these two molds. And we, this is our first production. This is actually totally 100% produced by the uh, clay sediments. And uh, we are planning to uh, design different molds to produce different shapes. And these shapes will be produced. Actually, the hexagonal this uh, shape and the normal one uh, already uh, we produce it. And we will use uh, also, and we will produce some roof tiles to cover this traditional building. We are trying to build a, build, uh, a building without cementing material. And we will use, uh, and also can build, as you see, sidewalks here. And already we built a wall, and we tested for this wall. We tested the, uh, the isolation property of this wall. And this wall will be used also, uh, uh, as uh, Dr. Bigdadi uh, said, that uh, there's another project for uh, uh, re-engineering the blastering, non-cementing, uh, blastering and mortaring material. This will be uh, also applied in, into this wall and, uh, see, uh, and we'll test the physical and uh, isolation property of the wall with the blastering material, non-cementing blastering material. Of course, we need a kiln to produce these bricks. We have sophisticated kilns like this one. We will not use it because it's a little bit sophisticated and uh, uh, need, let's say, factory and engineers to be run. And we need a traditional kiln that can be run by the locals. Uh, as uh, we see, uh, as we know that uh, our Her vision, our Her Highness vision, that to uh, uh, to introduce the locals in uh, this uh, such project to uh, to help the economy of the let's say the the, the, the area. Uh, this is inside traditional kiln where the the green bricks is stacked here before firing process, and this is the outside. Uh, as as we see, it is simple built than the previous picture, so it is uh, and it is uh, working on in this uh, in, in this. Uh, Example: It's working on heavy fuel. Actually, we are planning to uh, to fire it by natural gas, just to uh, just to have a clean area, and we will see uh, that it will not disturb the lands the landscape of the area. That means it's uh, okay. We can put these cans in the in uh, such area like the dam the dam area without disturbing the the landscape of this, uh, this is our last two slides. So uh, this is not, as we said, it's an ongoing uh, project. We started with the soil sludge ash, and we are now going to uh, dam sediments. Uh, next project proposal will 
uh, will be joined with the uh, Nevada University to have this, this uh, building or this, uh, this model, this traditional house uh, made of these bricks to be tested, to be, uh, uh, to be tested by seismic uh, tables. These are actually uh, one of the biggest seismic tables uh, found in the Nevada University where uh, testing bridges and houses in a scale of one-tenth scale. So also we are planning uh, uh, a project with them uh, now in, uh, in drafting the proposal actually to test one of these uh, proposed buildings on these tables. Of course, these bricks used from a uh, long time and sustainable. You see in these pictures uh, some old uh, buildings and it's uh, still there because it's sustainable bricks than cementing bricks as we see in this picture and this picture. And also you can build a huge building, a modern building with this type of uh, uh, bricks. So we have to get rid of in, uh, these sediments in a safe way. Uh, and uh, to be useful to the building industry uh, as a whole. And thank you.